Thanks for joining us today. Pastor Armin Sommer here, and with me is uh, Tim Leonard, our executive director. And we want to just bring you a little update about Grace Church for our family, both at the NetCon campus and our Randolph Bethlehem campus. And we want to talk to you about our worship, our online presence, uh, when we're going to reopen, the, what the plan there is, future technology needs and opportunities, uh, as well as some leadership questions, some changes in our Board of Elders, as well as some church business meetings. And Tim, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about our fiscal and financial condition here at the church. Yeah, you know, that's been one of the biggest blessings in the, in the course of this whole uh, epidemic is the faithfulness of God's people here at Grace. And we have experienced maybe a, a, a slight, maybe even no uh, actual uh, loss of uh, revenue through the giving of tithes and offerings, which has been honestly amazing. And uh, we're incredibly blessed by that. Uh, that enables us to continue to partner with some of our missionary partners uh, like uh, 410 Bridge and our partnership with uh, Rancho Viejo and, and Guatemala and also uh, New York City Relief. Uh, we're continuing to support them. We saw a video from, uh, uh, from their leader earlier this morning. So um, we want to thank you for that. Uh, we know that this uh, giving has enabled us to continue to maintain all our staffing levels. Uh, we've had to, you know, not reduce any staff members. We haven't even had to, to reduce pay. And I say that with a little bit of reluctance because I know that a lot of our families in our church are experiencing financial hardship. And uh, we want you to know that the church is here to help if, uh, if you need that. And we're thankful for um, uh, the stewardship that we are seeing through God's people here at Grace. When we talk about our worship experience, you know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 that uh, we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but we're, we're to continue in order to encourage one another, even as we see the day, which really referring to the day of the Lord, approaching. And many, uh, many of you are watching every week. Some of you are watching multiple times. It's amazing to me. But I realize that it's not the same as being together. But I encourage you to view joining us online as being part of the fulfillment and obedience really to, the, to that scripture that says we are to gather together. I find it very encouraging when I see your comments, when I see the number of people who have been watching and we're going to continue having our services available at watch parties on Facebook at 8.30, 9.45, 11.15 and 6 p.m. and then also a premiere at uh, on YouTube at 10.30 and those coincide with all of our worship services and we're going to continue doing that and we are uh, we're also investigating some very exciting ways that we're going to be able to continue this even after our church reopens in the future for physical in-person worship attendance, which we, we hope is soon. But uh, you're going to see some changes even as we innovate over these next few weeks. You may have noticed some things in our, on our uh, broadcast today, but take a look and be of interest. Keep in touch. Uh, tune in for our first Wednesday. Uh, on the, uh, for our communion services and, and all of the regular worship services that we have. And many of you have been actively uh, leading Bible studies. Uh, I mean, who even thought six months or a year ago uh, about what Zoom would mean to us in terms of a technology advantage? And so there have been people who've been faithfully leading studies, meeting as their small groups, and we want to encourage you to keep doing that as we move in the direction of reopening our physical worship services. And Tim, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the plans are for that? Yeah, isn't that, that's sort of the question of the day, right? Is uh, we're starting to feel like there's a loosening up. Uh, you know, just the other day, uh, our governor announced that beaches would be open uh, in time for Memorial Day, at least uh, in a limited case. So the question that we're pondering all the time that we're getting more and more of is when are, when's the church gonna be open again? And, and again, I wanna I want to say something that I've said before is that 
let's don't lose the sight that grace is open. The church is open. We're doing the business that God has put before us. And so the church is open. This structure is not open. Our, our buildings are not open. And uh, we're looking forward to that day, but it's not happening yet. Um, but we're still doing business. In fact, I had a conversation just this morning with uh, Janice Rodland, our uh, children's ministry coordinator, and she's so excited about the summer activities that are gonna be happening in children's ministries uh, right now, uh, starting soon, we're gonna be announcing some of those. So we have exciting plans. Uh, yes, things are gonna be different uh, for the next few months, but we're still going to be doing the work that God has put in front of us. And so if you have uh, children, you can be looking for those things. Um, those are coming out soon, but <clears throat> excuse me, the, the, the big thing is that we are not going to be opening um, this week. We're not going to be opening anytime soon in terms of weeks. But we're in a position where we don't want to be the church that defies the order of the CDC or the local or state officials. We want to, do, we want to be careful. We want to open as soon as we can. But we're trying to balance so that we don't open too soon. So uh, an opening will assuredly change our worship experience um, you know we're going to have to adhere to social distancing we're going to have to adhere to wearing masks probably uh, we're going to have to uh, adhere to smaller uh, numbers in our worship services and we have to weigh the positives and negatives of that of that uh, is we want church to be a safe place we want people to be able to come to a church and feel safe feel like they're not going to be infected uh, or they're not going to spread infection if they happen to have it. So we want uh, to be able to make an informed decision about what we should do about that. And so we're not going to open before we think it's safe, and we're not going to wait longer than we think is necessary, if that makes sense. Yeah, Tim, can I add to that? that and w we find ourselves interacting with civil authorities, and we want to make sure that we as leaders and, and as members of a congregation that we interact with our elected and appointed officials both respectfully and honorably in all of our communication. So that's part of that's part of the reason why we're we're not just saying, oh, you know, we're we don't care what you say, we're just gonna go ahead and do this. We we want to be careful in the way that we interact uh, with those who are in authority over us and uh, and honor them. Right, right, great point. And so what we have it's not like we're we're not making plans. We are making plans and we have uh, outlined in pencil a three-phase strategy in which we would reopen and phase one would more more likely include the ability for small groups to come together um, groups of 10 or less uh, Bible studies uh, support groups things like that could begin to meet uh, on campus we're looking at outdoor meetings as a as a possibility but even phase one we don't think is going to happen uh, based on the, the latest information that we've gotten, and this changes every day, but the latest information that we've gotten says that this is likely not going to have, phase one is not going to happen until early June at the earliest. So I don't anticipate any changes until then. We'll start with phase one. We'll give that some time to see how that plays out and the ripple effect of that. And then we would start at some point after that several weeks after that probably phase two phase two would mean something like uh, we would do uh, a, a live worship service in our in our churches uh, more likely than not that would include smaller numbers reserve seating spread out seating masks gloves no social contact no coffee what i know it's crazy oh we, i don't know that we can have church with no coffee and no donuts. That's almost like saying no Bible. I know. Oh, so geez. that's why have church if you can't have coffee, Oh, my right? goodness, yeah. <laughs> but so that would look like phase two. And again, then you um, take some time, see what the ripple effect of that is. Before, at some point, and I got to think this is several months down the road, before we return to full live worship services. So that's probably not going to happen until... Well, I don't even want to put a date on that, but that's several probably months away. That being said, what we have really adopted and what we're getting a lot of positive feedback is 
during all of these phases, we're going to continue to have a very high quality online worship service experience that you can experience on Sunday morning. You can have uh, a community to do that. We're going to, I got to believe that it's going to be soon that we're going to be able to have small groups and homes that meet and worship together online. So we're moving along, but we're moving along slowly. Again, we want church to be a safe place and we're not going to open for live services until we're sure that we can do that. And I want to give special kudos to our children's ministry for uh, doing online Sunday school. There are all kinds of things that you can experience through the online ministries right now of Grace Church. Uh, I want to mention a word about our, the, our governance situation. Uh, we have uh, a board of a church board, uh, church leadership board that consists of uh, elders. And uh, Tim and I are part of that. Cameron is part of that. Uh, and we meet together regularly and, and we keep the church, we seek to, to keep the church on track. There are several of our elders who would normally be scheduled to go off there at the end of their terms, but we haven't been able yet to replace them because we haven't yet had any congregational meeting. So uh, that's going to be in the future that we're going to be able to do that. In fact, Tim, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening with congregational business meetings? Sure. If you've been around Grace for any length of time, you know that we've missed two important meetings. We've missed uh, an annual business meeting and we've missed a budget meeting where we uh, elect, like Armin said, we elect new elders. That should have already happened. It hasn't happened. And um, we, we were supposed to approve the new budget. That hasn't happened. So the elders have, first of all, the elders have approved to us to continue to operate based on last year's budget, which was approved by the congregation. So we're able to do business uh, based on that. The elders uh, who were slated to go off, as Armin said, have elected to stay on until we're able to vote again. Now we've looked at the possibility and we believe we could do this, uh, having a congregational meeting via a platform like Zoom. So we also see that that's fraught with difficulty and and it also i think more importantly it really greatly reduces the amount of interaction that could happen in a meeting like that you can imagine a zoom meeting with 200 people is is not con, uh, conducive to good good communication and definitely not conducive to good uh, interaction questions that sort of thing so we have decided to table that at this point um, we, we, th we, f we feel like it's more important for us to be able to come together and sit in the same room, have questions, t have discussion, be able to meet these new elders face to face before we vote them in if you haven't already met them, and to ask questions about the budget. So we think we can continue um, operating the way we are until at least even July, in August, before we're able to safely come together again to have that meeting. We might revisit that if things go in a different direction than we see right now. We might revisit and call a, um, a special meeting, but uh, uh, via Zoom or something like that, but we're not currently ready to do that. And another thing is you should be looking for within the next few days, a survey that we're gonna be sending out that asks you mm -hmm. some of your opinions about um, reopening and how you feel and how your family is doing during this so we encourage you if you get that survey as a member regular attender of grace that that you do take the time to fill that out and, and send it back so we've talked to you about a lot of things today we've we've talked about our online presence uh, we sketched out a, a a very rough picture of what it may look like in the coming weeks and the next month or two of what reopening will look like, what our worship gatherings will be. We've spoken about our, our, our financial state and we're very grateful for your faithfulness. Uh, we've, we've also uh, spoken about uh, our elders and business meetings, all of those things. It may leave you with a fair amount of information, but also it may spawn more questions for you in, in your own mind. And so I, I urge you to email one of us or all of us at, uh, you can contact Tim, you'll see his email on the screen. You can contact me or our chairman of our elder board, our new chairman, Ariel Morion, or uh, Warren Letterer of our vice chair. And 
any one of us would be happy to give you any more information that, you, that, you, uh, that we have that we can possibly share with you. Feel free to do that. And we're going to bring you uh, more updates like this in the future. So keep watching for them. We'll let you know when they're coming. Thanks for joining us today for this State of the Church message.